All right, happy noon day, happy noon day, happy noon day. Happy Wednesday, happy February Wednesday. <laughs> so glad to see you, all of you here in the audience, in the sanctuary, and all of you out there. And they said, I'm, I'm not doing right. But cyberspace is what I'm saying. <laughs> They're hearing us all over the world and all out in space. All right, we want you to stand and we want you to use your best voice and those at home, go get your hymn book. We're going to try Great is Our Faithfulness. We're not going to do like solos and hang on something. We got to keep on moving so everybody can keep up. All right. And uh, Enoch, Alois is dependent on you. Okay. Help us out. <laughs> All right. We're glad to have you here. We're glad to have your voices. Great is thy faithfulness, God my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassion, they fail not. As thou hast been, Forever will be good. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new 
Today's scripture will be taken from the New King James Version of Psalms number 37, beginning with the first verse. Do not fret because of evildoers, not be envious of their work, workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass, and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord, and do good. Dwell in the land, and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your ways to the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light, mm -hmm. and your justice as the noonday. Rest in the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Mm -hmm. Do not fret because of him who prosper in his way. Because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret, it only causes harm. For evildoers shall be cut off. But those who wait on the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. I have read for you the first nine verses of Psalms number 37. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of his holy word. Amen. Let the church say, Amen. Amen. Men ought to always pray, right? Mm -hmm. We ought to always be in conversation with God. Because when the doctor, the preacher, the friend, and whoever has done all they can do, we still have a higher power. Yeah. We can go to God in prayer. Amen. And we do believe prayer changes things. We have on our special prayer list today, we continue to pray for Richard Gardner, and of course we lift up Ray, Renee in, uh, with him. 
we have Elizabeth Martin, the mother of Gary Martin, Rodney Jackson, uh, Sergeant Dwayne Perkins, Dan Great, Louis King, the son of Francis Johnson, Kristen Eason, and Christopher Jackson, Jeffrey Brown, an extended family member of our own Reverend Kirk, asking for special prayer. We continue in prayer for our President, Joe Biden, for our Vice President, Kamala Harris, for our state and local governments, and the government's heads, the uh, mayors and the governors of these states, uh, that God will move in politics, that they will allow God in. So many campaigns uh, and point out their family men and their godly men and women. Uh, may they live it out. May they mm -hmm. be open to what God is saying, yeah. that we'll be a better nation and a better people. We continue to live in prayer because it is still real. Uh, COVID-19 victims mm -hmm. and their families. Mm -hmm. Our military forces and their families. We pray for peace in the Ukraine and for a different mindset for Russia. We pray to an end in our own nation of violence and hatred. Mm -hmm. uh, we ask Brother Enoch Nichols to please come and give us our first prayer. Father, we come to you again this noonday hour. First of all, thanking you for allowing us to be here. Mm -hmm. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for all the blessings that you've allowed us to enjoy. Thank we you, Lord. ask that you bless St. John, bless uh, the leadership of St. John, everyone that goes to make up uh, the leadership of, of this house. Mm -hmm. Bless those, Heavenly Father, who have gathered under this canopy today to listen to your word uh, as the teacher expounds. Forgive us of our sins and our shortcomings, mm -hmm. Heavenly Father. And we ask that you bless this world. Uh, things are not going the way I know that you would like for it to go. So we ask, Heavenly Father, that you step in because We've done about all we can do. And we ask that you step in yes, and take over. Yes. Watch over us. Bless us and keep us. Yeah, yeah. It's my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 At, this, at this time, we ask that uh, Reverend William Miles would come and give us our second prayer for today. Amen. Let us go to prayer. Jesus. 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 When we can't call on no one else, but we can call upon Jesus. He comes to make everything everything all right yeah. but there's an ingredient that's involved and that is trust the Sunday school teacher said to trust in the Lord with all your heart leaning out to your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Sunday school teacher said a long time ago, even when we didn't really clearly understand that we continue to trust in the Lord with all our heart, leaning not to our own understanding. And all 
thy ways acknowledge him. And he will direct thy path. Then, O oh, Heavenly Father, there was just a chaplain on the battlefield of Vietnam. Come to share with us that our God is able to keep that which we commit unto him right. until the day of salvation. Then, Lord, we thank you for the things that we can believe, trust, and understand, even in the midst of our confusion. Your assurance to us, Lord, that you will never leave us, nor forsake us. Then, oh God, there's many times when we are just moving along. We think we're doing well. We pray that we're doing well. But you are the ultimate judge. And you can keep us in perfect peace in the midst of any storms that we face, Lord. Yeah. Thank you, O oh, Heavenly Father, for this nation. Thank you, O oh, Heavenly Father, for this the Lord's church. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you, O oh, Heavenly Father, for Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, and surrounding communities, Lord. Thank you, O oh Heavenly Father, where there's some social justice needed to be input to the solution, Lord. And we can say praise your righteous and holy name because you're working it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're working it out according to your will, dear Lord. Yeah, yeah. And you've already told us, Lord, absolutely. No weapon formed against us shall pass. Greater seed that is within us than he that's in the world, Lord. Thank you, O Heavenly Father, for being all that we need for you to be in times like these, Lord. There are some questions, some complications, but through it all, you're working it out to your glory, Lord. You're the supreme judge, Lord. And you make all things well for your children that must have to travel this king's highway. For the doctors, nurses, technicians, oh heavenly father, the scientists, you're working all things out according to your will. Lord, you're covering our sons and daughters, even right now in the military. You're protecting them, Lord. You're having decision makers to make decisions which is good, good for the soul, O oh, Heavenly Father, and they replenish, O oh, Heavenly Father, that that they're like. Give us the true confidence and understanding, O oh, Heavenly Father, of your will and your way, Lord. Even in the midst of the questions that we have on our hearts and in our minds, give us understanding, wisdom, and knowledge, Lord, to draw nearer, day by day to you, to draw nearer. Lord, to advise, O oh, Heavenly Father, those that surround our homes. Lord, bless the leadership, the fellowship in this the Lord's church, Lord. All our steps continually according to your word, Lord. Then bless your Father, those that's going through that doesn't seem Sufficient, O oh, Heavenly Father, for the time that they have in store, 
But we know that the Lord once again, and we'll say over and over again, the Lord able to keep that which we commit unto him until the day of salvation. Be with the families, Lord. Love, O oh, Heavenly Father, in the midst of difficulty to be loved, Lord. Let us come to realize that you are all God's children. And we thank you for it. We thank you for blessing our efforts, O oh, Heavenly Father. We thank you, O oh, Heavenly Father, for lifting up this to Lord's church and churches in the community where you might be glorified, Lord. We love you this afternoon, Lord. We praise you. We thank you for all good and perfect gifts that you send from above. Lord, let this Black History Month be all that you designed for it to be. Touch the hearts and minds of those in control, Lord. Then, O oh, Heavenly Father, when we did all to stand, let us yet be able to stand in the times of perils. Lord, we love you. We praise you. And we thank you. And we also would love one another. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord. Praise be to God. Is our prayer, even on this fine afternoon, that the Lord has bestowed upon us, that we might fall according to your will and according to your way. Keep our children safe in the schools, Lord. Keep our children safe in the colleges and higher learning. Keep our families well, Lord. And let us walk according to your will, according to your way. And that all will be well with our souls. All of this we ask you, Lord. And maybe a few things we forgot along the way. But you're right there to pick us up. We love you, thank you, and praise you in your son Jesus' name. The Savior is our prayer. And the children of the Most High God all come in with their amen. 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 It's our pleasure at this time to present the teacher, Dr. Lawrence C. Kirk. At the church, say amen. amen. And we're going to keep him lift up in prayer. His little flu and bugs and things been after him, but I think he's going to be all right. He'll be all right. <laughs> well, thank you there, Reverend Wade. Well, uh, looks like we're going to have to set out some more chairs. <laughs> <laughs> Fill it up in here. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Praise God. All right. We're going to uh, uh, start out, first of all, saying that on March 15th, we will start our new mm -hmm. format for Wednesday night. Uh, have a new format for Wednesday night. We want you all to be a part of that as we get ready for that. We're, we're doing some uh, parodies and some short videos. I think you're going to enjoy the one coming up this Sunday uh, uh, that uh, our own Reverend David Dawson wrote. Uh, the, the, the production and Hollywood is looking for him right now. <laughs> uh, so we, we, we're looking forward to that on this Sunday. And we want to encourage you to do that and tell your uh, friends and uh, uh, co-workers and so forth, those who are taking lunch breaks at 12 o'clock, that they can tune in on our Facebook mm -hmm. page. I know we did a switch somehow during the mid-year last year because we had a uh, little uh, twitch in our old Facebook page, but we're back on the original one. And people are saying, well, I don't know which one is what. So if you got any problem with that, contact the church and we'll get you signed up on that. Uh, so that'll be started. Then, too, we're going to start adding a new twist even on a noonday. So that's, we're working on some things and trying to 
uh, get those things accomplished here. So with that being said, we're going to, today we're going to look at a, a, a subject I, I just uh, chose. Also, let me say this, those of you who uh, we asked on last week, if you have some subject matters that you would like for us to uh, cover, uh, you know, uh, concerning the Bible, of course, it's <laughs> not, you know, <laughs> you know, not dating or anything like that. You know, we, we want we want to address uh, some of those uh, some of those uh, uh, issues in the Bible. We had several that uh, we recorded on last week. Uh, they had some questions about the cult and you know what's the difference between the Protestant and Catholic and so forth, church and denominationalism and so forth there. So if you got some questions in Old Testament, New Testament uh, studies, uh, Revelation has always been a good one. In the book of Revelation, you know, end times, uh, looking at that, we, we, we're dealing with uh, quite a few. The, the Bible is full of subject matters uh, that we can look at. We've covered quite a few in my 20 years being here. Uh, but if there's anything that you'd like for us to study, we, we're taking those suggestions uh, now. So if you would, if you're here in the audience, uh, let us know, and then uh, those of you who are watching us on Facebook, if you would just put that in the comments, and we're looking at those comments and uh, considering some of those uh, suggestions as well. So with that being said, today we're going to look at when life throws you a curveball. When life throws you a curveball. You know, have you, have you ever been there when, you know, things change? You know, all of a sudden, unexpected things happen in your life uh, that you never uh, accounted for or never prepared for, and life just seems to throw you a curveball. Well, today we're going to look at a, a psalm, Psalm 88, Psalm 88, and we're going to see a few things in it and try to pull out from this psalm some things that can help us. Uh, deal with life. That's one thing about the Bible. You know, that the Bible, you know, if people are looking to go to the Bible and find everything good, mm -hmm. you won't find it. There, right. there, there's a lot right. of bad right. things that happen in the Bible, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And I thank God that he did not just um, uh, exclude those things, but it included all of us because some people think that life is just perfect and life is perfect. But we find here today in our Psalms 88 that things are not perfect always, right. are they, right? Even as Christians, things right. are not perfect, right? right. 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 We, we go through some things. Right. We go through some suffering. We go through some heartaches and hardships and so forth like that. But the Bible teaches us how to handle life when it throws you a curveball, right. when it throws you a curveball. So let's look here uh, today and see if my switcher is not switching. <laughs> Clicker is not clicking. So we'll go manual. You need a battery? Probably, yeah. Yeah, you got one. You might switch one in there. Yeah, Psalms 88, uh, chapter, of what chapter? Book 88. <laughs> Uh, numbers 1 through 18. There are 150 psalms in the book of Psalms. Mm -hmm. And we know that, right? We, we know that. But this psalm, Psalm 88, this is without a doubt the saddest. Mm -hmm. This is the saddest psalm uh, without a doubt. You know, matter of fact, it can be compared to uh, the uh, Story of Job, really. Mm -hmm. If you if you're doing a study on the book of Job, you can play Psalms 88 right with that uh, story of Job. Mm -hmm. uh, here is a man who does not want to continue living his life. He wants to die. Mm -hmm. uh, some say that you know he's possibly uh, the uh, thank you. He's possibly uh, one of the sons of Korah, mm -hmm. uh, you know, musician. Uh, we really don't know, and uh, he also may have leprosy. It may be the psalmist may be suffering from leprosy. 
And we know that dreaded disease of leprosy, we've heard about it, how it uh, destroys the flesh and uh, the conditions of, that it puts you through mm -hmm. and the physical uh, ailments that they, they went through, one would go through, and mm -hmm. suffering from this terrible uh, condition of leprosy. And so here in Psalms 88, we have a lot of things going. It's a sad song. Uh, he, the, the man does not want to continue to live. You know, that's suicidal living. Mm -hmm. and, and we hear today there are people who have been suicidal. Um, uh, for example, uh, I was looking, and you probably saw this on the news a, couple of, a week ago, where they did a, somebody showed a video of uh, uh, school violence in school where the girl was jumped on by some other kids yeah. at school yeah. and then the kid committed suicide because the whole world saw it right and she you know she fell to the point of taking her own life that she didn't want to live but i have to admit now that life has been pretty tough uh, you know for a lot of us but i, I haven't gotten to the point where i don't want to live you know y'all know what i'm saying it, it, life has been tough but for me to want to you know, take myself out. I, I haven't been there. But there are times when we see that life is so miserable, and, and those people, when you think about this, when they don't have anything to live for, uh, apparently there's a lack of understanding of knowing God. Amen. Mm -hmm. You know, when you get to the point of uh, wanting to take your own life, uh, there, you know, and we've seen suicide. People that just give up on life and take a gun, or, you know, take themselves out, you know, kill, you know, uh, families where they man goes in and shoots his whole family, entire family, and then kills himself because he doesn't want to live. You know, just uh, selfish too is uh, also selfish because when one goes into this state of mind, they're saying they're in, they want to be God. Mm -hmm. See, God gives life. God, God takes it away. So uh, Job said, blessed be the name of God. The Lord gave it, and the Lord take it away. Blessed be the name of God. So when we do something like that, we're putting ourselves in the position of God. And so but that's an individual that does not know God. But here in, our, in Psalms 88, we see this individual who is to the point of death, that he did not want to live anymore. It was just that bad. Mm -hmm. Like I said, the suffering of uh, possibly this leprosy that he was under, this extreme, excruciating pain. And, it, it, and you'll see here that he started as a young age. Mm -hmm. So it had been some time. He was dealing with this for a long time. And you can imagine when you're under some stress and pressure for a long time and getting no relief, uh, you want some relief. And so the thought comes up that he didn't even want to live. I don't know where you are today, uh, those of you watching, those of you here today, that you know, you may be in some times you uh, want to give up. You just, just want to give up and throw in the time. But here, this psalm teaches us uh, some things, uh, and, and I want us to see how the psalmist deals with this here. Psalms 88, I'm going to read it from the King James Version. And then I'm going to look at it from the Eugene Peterson translation. So I'm going to go through the reading of it uh, kind of quickly. But if you note it uh, in your notes uh, that it is Psalms 88, verses 1 through 18. It's only 18 verses of this uh, short psalm. But I want you to see it in the King James Version. And then I want to read it out of the Eugene Peterson translation because it kind of, he kind of helps us with this idea of... Uh, of, of suffering and uh, the condition that this man was in. So it, it reads this way, O Lord God of my salvation. Matter of fact, real quickly here, that's the most positive part of this song, <laughs> is the first words. <laughs> no, seriously, seriously, it, and you'll see it here in a minute. This is the most, this is the most positive this uh, psalmist has here in the very first intro of the sentence here. O oh Lord God of my salvation. Matter of fact, in Genesis chapter 2, you see this same uh, formation of the word Lord God. 
Uh, in the Hebrew, we have Jehovah Elihim. And so, which means the covenant giving God, the supreme being, the covenant uh, being God, one who keeps his promises, the salvation God, the God of creation, the God of all uh, created things. He's praying to this one God. And then, too, they include the word salvation, the God of my salvation, in the very first line here. I'm praying to you, so get that. So we know this psalmist knows who to go to. Right. Right? He knows who to go to. And he starts out, but, but catch this, that's the only positive thing you're going to hear for the rest of this psalm. O oh Lord God of my salvation, I have cried day and night before thee. Let my prayer come before thee, incline thine ear unto my cry, for my soul is full of troubles, mm -hmm. and my life draweth nigh unto the grave. Mm -hmm. I am counted with them that go down into the pit. Mm -hmm. I am as a man that hath no strength. Mm -hmm. Free among the dead. Listen, listen, listen at the word here. Free among the dead, like the slain that lie in the grave, whom thou rememberest no more. And they are cut off from thy hand. Thou hast laid me in the lowest pit. <laughs> You're a pit, but he said the lowest pit. <laughs> when you think of the word pit, is low. But I'm in the lowest pit. That doesn't sound just helpless here. In darkness, in the deep. Thy wrath lieth hard upon me, and thy hast afflicted me with all thy ways. Thou hast put away my acquaintances far from me. Thou hast made me an abomination unto them. I am shut up, abomination, I'm sorry. I am shut up, and I cannot come forth. Mine eye mourneth by reason of affliction. Lord, I have called daily upon thee. I have stretched out my hands unto thee. I cried daily. He's going through. He's going through, isn't he? Mm. Will thou show wonders to the dead? Shall the dead arise and praise thee? Shall thy loving kindness be declared in the grave? For thy faithfulness in destruction. Hmm. Shall thy wonders be known in the dark? Listen to that. Everything is negative. And thy righteousness in the land of forgetfulness. Hmm. But unto thee have I cried, O Lord, and in the morning shall my prayer prevent thee. Lord, why castest thou off my soul? Why hidest thy, thy face from me? I am afflicted and ready to die. Here it is. I am afflicted and ready to die from my youth up. While I suffer thy terrors, I am distracted. Mm -hmm. Thy fierce wrath goeth over me. Thy terrors have cut me off. They came round about me daily like water. They compassed me about together. And final verse 18 says, Lover and friend hast thou put far from me. I don't have anybody. <laughs> I don't have anybody. Mm -hmm. And mine acquaintances into darkness. Mm -hmm. It ends with darkness. That's King James Version. Look at Eugene Peterson's translation, the message Bible. God you're my last chance of the day. <laughs> I spend the night on my knees before you. Put me on your salvation agenda. Take notes on the trouble I'm in. I've had my field of trouble. I'm camped on the edge of hell. I'm written off as a lost cause. One more statistic. A hopeless case, abandoned as already did. One more body in a stack of corpses. 
and not so much as a gravestone. I'm a black hole in oblivion. Abandoned as already did, one more body in a stack of corpses, mm -hmm. and not so much as great. Am I repeating myself here? Yeah, yeah I am. You, you, you dropped me into a bottomless pit, mm -hmm. sunk me in a pitch black abyss. Mm -hmm. I'm battered senseless by your rage, relentlessly pounded by your waves of anger. You turned my friends against me, mm -hmm. made me horrible to them. And that's the indication of. Uh, Leprosy, possibly the, the look of leprosy upon his body. I'm caught in a maze and can't find my way out, blinded by tears of pain and frustration. I call to you, God, all day. I call, I wring my hands, I plead for help. Can, can, do you see the hopelessness? In this song, this, I, I, I've done everything I can do. I'm, I'm, I'm miserable. I'm to the point of death. But, but he said it starts out, but I'm call, I call on you. Right. Mm -hmm. In the book of Job, remember, Job was wondering, why am I in all this trouble? Mm -hmm. And God never did answer him. Mm -hmm. And you'll find the same thing here in Psalm 88. In all of this, God never speaks. But we hear this cry of desperation, this cry of help uh, that he's desperately looking for here. Blinded by tears of pain and frustration, I call to you, God, all day. I call, wring my hands, I plead for help. Are the dead a live audience for you, your miracles? Mm -hmm. Do ghosts ever join the choirs that praise you? Mm -hmm. Does your love make any difference in a graveyard? Is your faithful presence noticed in the corridors of hell? Or your marvelous wonders ever seen in the dark? Your righteous ways noticed in the land of no memory? Mm -hmm. I'm standing my ground. Look at this there. Verse 13. I'm standing my ground, God, shouting for help at my prayers every morning. In other words, he's praying day and night. I'm praying every day and night, every morning, on my knees, each daybreak. Why, God, do you turn a deaf ear? Why do you make yourself scarce? For as long as I remember, I've been hurting. I've taken the worst you can hand out, and I've had it. Your wildfire anger has blazed through my life. I'm bleeding black and blue. You've attacked me fiercely from every side, raining down blows till I'm nearly dead. And here, verse 18, you made lover and neighbor alike dump me. The only friend I have left is darkness. Isn't that a sad, That's a sad, sad condition. Very sad condition. What, what can we find? What, what, what can we find about this psalm? How is it that we can go to the word of God and in this we can pull from this anything <laughs> positive? How, how, how can we use that? You know, there may be somebody now say, I've been there. I, I felt that, you know, as if God is absent, that the God is not present, you know, going through health issues and, and things like that. Where is God? Where is God when you need him? Where, where is God when you call day and night and you, you have no answers? And, and, and people are looking uh, at us and, as we as believers and where is your God now? Can you imagine uh, though his friends? Where is your God now? Look at Job. Where is your God? What, what, where is your God? What, 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 what is it about you? You call yourself a Christian and, and look at all the problems and trouble you're in now. Where is your God? But yet still, like I said, he, he prays. He calls on God's name. And, I, and I'm here to say right now, too, that these are the times when you talk about faithful and committed Christians, when it looks like 
You've done all you can do. Right. Uh, 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 Donnie McClurgan says, stand. <laughs> we can't do nothing else. You cried. You prayed. You've done everything you possibly can do. He says, stand. Stand anyway. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, it just seems uh, impossible to do that. But in the midst of all this trouble, in the midst of all this pain, he calls on his God. Yeah, yeah. Let's look here. Maintain your connection to God. Number point number one. This is point, my point number one. Is maintain your connection to God. Isn't it true that a lot of times people, when they go through problems, they disconnect mm -hmm. from God. They stop coming to church. They stop praying. They stop reading their word. When mama dies, daddy dies, someone close to them dies, they then want to do away with God and blame it on God and want to disconnect from God. Well, first thing we need to do is maintain a connection to God. You're right. Even with all his problems, this man kept on praying. You know, he kept on praying. Think about that. Mm -hmm. He's praying. Well, you're going through all this. Why don't you just shut up and die? Like a Job's wife, why don't you just curse God and die? Right. Mm -hmm. But he kept on praying. That whole so I mean ain't nothing but prayer. God, God, hear me, <coughs> look at me, look at me. He maintained his connection to God. Mm -hmm. And that's what you and I gotta do. You and I got to do that. As, as true believers, we, we need to maintain our connection to God. And that's why it, it bothers me when I, when I look at people after the pandemic came on, that people began to uh, neglect the church, no longer attend, no longer uh, be connected, involved with the church, and go their own separate way. But there's no way when trouble hits, and you all, Lord knows, this is, Something that I've never been through. Can y'all remember? Let's, let's just reminisce. I, I, I can remember. Y'all remember when the pandemic hit? Uh, I can remember, uh, uh, honestly, being scared. How I many of y'all were scared? You know, we, we looked on the news. And matter of fact, New York City, you know, the numbers, they were playing the numbers every day. This many deaths. This many in the hospital. You know, this many cases, and you were watching on live TV, they had these freezers with bodies. Y'all remember that? Oh, yes. I don't forget it. And, and, and people, uh, I remember we were, we were not coming up here at the church, and all I was staying at home in the house, we were locked up with one another, getting on one another's nerves. Y'all remember that? Yes. Is the world coming to an end? We were thinking, what, God, what's going on here? And look at how God has now, we've kind of relaxed. Mm -hmm. We've gotten comfortable now. You're right. But it did cause us to take a second look yes, at our connection mm -hmm. to God. Yes, sir. Didn't it? Mm -hmm. Cause us to take a Second, look at our connection to God, really get connected to God. But here, even with all his problems, this man kept on praying. Mm -hmm. Kept on praying. I guess that's what I want to say uh, to us today. I, whatever your problems are, you got to keep on praying. You, yeah. you got to keep on praying. Yeah. You got to keep on believing uh, that God will do what he says he's going to do because this name Elohim means the covenant keeping God. God said it in his word and his word is good. He's going to keep his word. And we need to be uh, assured of that and know that he is the covenant keeping God. Not only that, uh, but recognizing how he prayed can help us when we face times like these. Notice he prayed continually. He prayed continually. Night and day, it says. Uh, at first in the morning and at daybreak, he, he, he was praying continually. He was consistent in his praying. And then he prayed intelligently. 
he directed his prayer toward God and God alone. He just was not idly, idly throwing out words, but he knew the object of his faith. He knew where he was praying. His prayers were centered and focused upon God. Upon God. Yeah. And that's how we should face when we get to, uh, life throws us a curveball. This is where we need to be. We need to focus Upon God. I, I see and, and hear lately, you know, our church has gone through several funerals. And, you know, you can see how many families have gone through the loss of a loved one. And, it, and it's nothing like when you lose a loved one. I mean, you're talking about dark. Uh, talking about dark was a night. <laughs> I mean, that it's dark when you lose a loved one and you see them lower your loved one into the ground and you, you, you know, you've hopelessness. If you don't know God, uh, then it, it's mighty dark. It's yeah. mighty dark. And so we see here that he prayed to his God. Mm -hmm. And not only that, but you need to maintain your commitment to God. Have a connection, yes, to God, but a commitment. A commitment to God. It's just like after all you've done, stand. This is I'm committed. I, you know, we think about the three Hebrew boys. He said, whether he deliver us or not, right. we will not bow. Right. <laughs> In other words, we've got to have that commitment uh, that we're going all the way through. If he does not deliver us, we will not bow. We're committed. We're going with this all the way. God looks at that. I, I, I think about the scriptures when we see Abraham and Isaac. And here is Abraham, been wanting this boy for all his life, wanting this son. He gets a son, and then God tells him, take him up to Mount Moriah and kill him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> God, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. Right there, Abraham had a commitment to God. Well, I believe, God, you gave him, you're going to give him somehow, you're going give to yeah. give him back to me somehow. I don't know how, but I'm committed yes, sir. to listen to obey what you say. I'm committed. I'm going all the way. I'm committed. I'm committed to God. I'm committed. You all, right now, in our 21st century, here we are as Christians now, a small group of us here uh, today on Wednesday. We've got to be committed. The whole world, that the world has dropped to the name of God from their vocabulary. Mm -hmm. The world has done everything to go away from the guidelines, the moral compass of the Bible altogether, and God is no longer part of their lives. And so we need to stay committed. We need to stay together and hang in here. We need not uh, be caught in a position that we fall away from God, go through what is called the apostasy, the falling away from God. We need to be committed mm -hmm. to God. Yeah, yeah. All the way. I mean, committed. You know, most people, you know, just like even in church, uh, you know, most people are committed to being uncommitted. <laughs> right? You know, they're not committed to nothing. You know, you know, I'll try this, but after that fails, I'll go to something else. I ain't, ain't committed. Well, you got to stay committed. Stay with it. You got to stay with it. You got to stay with it. So we, when we, when we uh, came into the fold as far as believers, uh, we, we accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We believe. We were signed, sealed with his Holy Spirit. We were committed. And uh, we're, we're committed to this fight. And you all know it's a fight. Right. It's a fight. And uh, we, we've got to be committed in it here. God is silent in this psalm. He does not respond to the broken heart, uh, broken heart hearted cry of this man. He does not respond. Just like we said in Job, he doesn't, he doesn't respond to him at all, but he was still committed. So when God does not answer your prayer, when you think he ought to have answered it, uh, is your commitment level lessened? But no, no. He's still, he's committed, even though God didn't say anything. Right. Even though Job, Job is still committed to him, even though his wife, he didn't listen to his wife, why don't you just curse God and die? 
but he right. was committed. Job was committed. The psalmist here is committed here. And we, what do we learn from this? We are, we need to be committed to, even at the point of where we don't can't even see God. That that old saying when you can't see God, you gotta trust his heart. You know, we 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 need to be committed. Mm -hmm. We need to be committed. I don't know where you are, I don't know what you're going through, uh, situations in your life that you may be under stresses and strains and so forth there, but we got to be committed uh, to God and to that old, what they call that bulldog tenacity. Yeah, yeah. You know, just grab hold and don't let go. You know, I'm, I'm committed. I am committed uh, to God. God does not even give this man a hint <laughs> that he's listening. You ever been like that? Oh, yeah. You know, uh, I remember my, my, my sister, Cookie, came home. Uh, this was a couple of years ago. And uh, me and uh, Beverly and, and my sister were in the room. And, and uh, I asked Beverly something. And Beverly didn't say anything. And my sister said, did she hear you? And I said, yeah, she heard me. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm saying? It's something when you know folk ain't listening. <laughs> God, my sister, well, you know, and that's just relationship. You know, I can be talking and no response. I know she heard me. You know, and I guess that's kind of where well, oh God, I may, you God may not have asked, but I know you're listening. I have that relationship with my wife. She ain't got to say nothing, but I know she heard me. But my sister said, did she hear you? Yeah, she heard me. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. That's the kind of relationship I have with my wife. She ain't got to say a word, but I know she heard me. You want to? Yeah, you want to. But that's, that's how we need to be. We got, God, I know you hear me. God, I know you hear me. But it is when you think about it, but though you don't answer. But this is the commitment, and this has a lot to do with his commitment and his connection to God. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I know I know, it's easy to say it, but every now and then we want to hear him, don't we? Right. right. Give, right. Me, give me a nod or something. Right. Give me an affirmation or something, God, that you hear me, that you know I'm out here on this island by myself. Right. God, just some kind of way, give me some sign. But even God didn't even make a, a positive uh, comeback on him at all. But that, yet still. That we see right here. Yeah, that we see right some, here. Some place down the line he answered. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, he was yeah. like that with Job. Yeah. yeah. Just like Job. All yeah. over there near the end. Yeah. yeah. At the very end, Job up. got everything back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, you know, you you know God on. replied that, where were you? When I did this, you, he, but he didn't answer him. Why is all this happening? Because we had the privilege of being in on the on the meeting at the very beginning with Satan, so we knew why it was happening. But Job did not know. And a lot of times in our lives, we don't know why it's happening. Right. But he stood in there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He stood strong. He stood firm. Because a lot of times that's all we want to know is why. Why God? Why is this happening? Why is this? Why are you not? Why is this? Why? Why? If I can know why, it looked like it'd make it a little easy to go through. Mm -hmm. But this is where the commitment comes in. Though I know not why, mm -hmm. <laughs> I know who. who? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. God, <laughs> that's it. Just know who mm -hmm. is behind all. Just know who you're praying to. Your connection is to God. Mm -hmm. And your commitment is to God. Mm -hmm. And that makes a big difference mm -hmm. in your life. God does not even give this man a hint that he is listening. Mm -hmm. God did not answer a single one of Job's questions, neither did he. Mm -hmm. Not a single one when we look at the book of Job. God did not answer Jesus when he cried out on the cross. Mm -hmm. Father. Father didn't answer. His own son. Can you imagine? His own didn't answer. Mm -hmm. But he went through it. 
Why has thou forsaken me? So God's greatest works are often accomplished in silence. Yes, sir. Oh, if that ain't a word there. God's greatest works may be accomplished in silence. When you're all alone and you're praying, God is working. It isn't that just like God, we often see God's handiwork, hindsight, mm -hmm. after it's all over, done and said, ah, that's what you were doing. Mm -hmm. Why are you going through the pain and suffering? But God is working it out mm -hmm. to your good. Mm -hmm. Whatever you're going through, whatever pains and sufferings you may be, Going through right now, God's greatest accomplishments may be in his silence. Then we need to maintain your celebration of God. Mm -hmm. Your connection, your commitment, but also the celebration of God. And here again, there is one gleam of glory, one bright spot in this otherwise gloomy psalm. And again, I bring you back to verse 1. He says, he calls out the God of my salvation. <laughs> the God of my salvation. If you are saved, you have a reason to rejoice no matter how dark the battle. Praise may not do away with your pain, but it will bring you into the Lord's presence. Boy, isn't that the truth? Mm. Pain bringing you into the Lord's presence. When you heard it, when you call out to God, it brings you right into the presence of God. C.S. Lewis once said, God whispers to us in our pleasures, speaks in our conscience, but shouts in our pain. It is his megaphone to rise a deaf world. Mm -hmm. Oh. Pain. Pain sure will bring you to your knees, won't it? Mm -hmm. I'll never forget when my son mm -hmm. went to uh, Iraq. My son Tony uh, spent two tours over in Iraq. And I'll be honest with y'all. That boy brought me to my knees. I prayed like I'd never prayed before uh, during those periods uh, when my son was over in Iraq during that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that conflict over there. And I'll never forget many times way late over in the night, mm -hmm. a phone would ring. Beverly and I both would just rise up, <laughs> you know. Uh, wondering what, 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 mm -hmm. what are we doing getting this call this late at night and so forth like that. Uh, my boy going through Fools Valley, and y'all hear me talk about this a lot of times, how when he was going through Fools Valley, he brought me to my knees, painful, as a uh, child rearing, trying to raise a child and so forth, going through some things here. And my girls are always getting, uh, my, my sons are always getting on me and say, Daddy, why are you, every time I hear you talking, you always talk about me. You know them girls are bad, too. <laughs> them girls are bad, too. Boy, you brought me to my knees. <laughs> you brought me to my knees, son. Yeah. C.S. Lewis. God whispers to us in the pleasures, speaks in our consciousness. Yes, God. Thank you, Lord. Shouts. Thank you, God. You hear him. You can hear it clear. And then finally, sometimes life hurts, but when it does, there is help and hope for those who know the Lord. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. There is help and hope for those who know the Lord. Any any uh, any questions? Any any uh, questions? Let me just throw this out to you all. Any other uh, subject matters from the audience that we have here to, today? about some areas that you'd like for us to go into uh, in the future. We're trying to build up a uh, source 
uh, things to look into. And we did this on last week. Any 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 ideas of some biblical uh, uh, quest that you like for us to journeys that, to go on uh, that you like to know more about? We've done quite a bit uh, in several years, but is there any any others? And those of you who are watching on Facebook uh, and YouTube. Put in there and let us know your your request as well. Uh, we want to try to get a good uh, source, a lot of sources that we're working on. These are just some studies done over the years and past years that we're just kind of refreshing, bringing back uh, to us, and uh, hopefully they've been good to you. Marcus? Yes, sir. Who do we have? <laughs> we have Alice Washington Troy. Alice Washington Troy. Velma Smith. Velma Smith. Charles Shepard. Charles Shepard. Diane Turner. Diane Turner. Annie Hinton. Annie Hinton. Deborah Williams. Deborah Williams. Hello, Deborah. I saw you Sunday. Spell hey. spells G Gina. Spells Gina. Spells Gina. Spells. 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 Gina. Gina. Mm -hmm. Rhonda Prince. Rhonda Prince. Barbara Bradford. Barbara Bradford. D Williams. Damascus Williams. Maxine Nash Washington. Maxine Washington. Mary Robinson. Mary Robinson. Ernestine Terry. Ernestine. Happy birthday, Ernestine. Irene Edwards. Irene Edwards. Beverly Samuels. Beverly Samuels. Linda Carter. Linda Carter. May Burge. May Burge. Carol Walker. <laughs> May Burge is omnipresent. Okay. <laughs> uh, who, who's the other one? Carol Walker. Carol Walker. Rosalind Johnson. Rosalind Johnson. Madeline Uzoma. Madeline Uzoma. Craig Green Sr. Craig Green Sr., man. Kenneth Warren. Kenneth Warren. Diane McDaniels. Diane McDaniels. Lillian Smith. Lillian Smith. Arthur Crawford. Arthur Crawford. And Linda Jones Grant. And Linda Jones Grant. And, and a, a host. host of others on our YouTube. So thank you so much. Let us pray as we get ready to go. Let's pray. God, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you, O oh God, for the people of God. Mm -hmm. As we've gathered here on today, as we've looked at Psalm 88, and you teach us, O oh God, that when things are tough and dark, that you're still there. You are the God of our salvation. Yes, God. You are Elohim, the God of the uh, covenant-keeping God. God, we <coughs> thank you that you keep your word. And that you've been faithful over these things in our lives. And God, we can see it all the way to the end. When things look dark, oh God, help us know that you are the light. And Lord, we thank you and we bless your name. God, we ask right now that we will not only be hearers of this word, but help us to be doers of the word. Those who are going through difficult times in their lives, even right now. We pray, God, that this will be a source of strength for them. To keep on keeping on. All of this we ask in the strong name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. 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 All right. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs>